I am Bernard Herschel. Before my retirement, I was the chief of HIV AIDS at the Geneva University Hospital. You might call me an AIDS dinosaur who has followed the HIV epidemic from the very first cases in the early 1980s through the triumph of antiretroviral therapies unequaled in the annals of medicine. Of course, this triumph has its flip side. Younger colleagues are no longer familiar with the opportunistic diseases and their myriad manifestations. Hence, the idea of these videos. After a short introduction, they will feature a series of images illustrating one or several exemplary cases from my files. Cats are the main reservoir of infection. Cats become infected with T. gondii by carnivorism after a sexual cycle in the cat intestine. All cysts are excreted in feces. All cysts become infective and remain so for months. Human infection occurs mainly through contact with cat feces or ingestion of undercooked meat. The parasites form tissue cysts in skeletal muscle, myocardium and brain, including the brain of the fetus in case of pregnancy. These cysts remain throughout the life of the host. In case you wondered, the gondii, Stenodactylus gondii, is a small rodent from North Africa. It would make a nice alternative pet if you want to keep the toxoplasma but don't like cats. Toxoplasma gondii come in three forms. The first are the ovocysts or oocysts excreted by the million in the feces of cats, especially young cats. The second are the tachyzoites, croissant-like forms seen in tissue culture and some active infections. The third form are tissue cysts, which contain thousands of bradyzoites within a diameter of 100 to 300 micrometers. CNS toxoplasmosis was discovered in 1983 in heterosexual patients from Haiti, Europe and Africa. It is relatively rare in the population of gay men from North America. This reflects zero prevalence of toxoplasmosis, which is relatively low in the United States, but close to 100% in some of the less developed countries. Toxoplasmosis in AIDS is essentially a disease of the brain. Another expression that is used is toxoplasma encephalitis, but even better would be toxoplasma abscess. There are often several lesions, more rarely only one, typically at the corticomedullary junction or in the basal ganglia. Contrast media is taken up the uptake is typically ring-like and may be delayed and the perilesional edema is marked often with a mass effect. This typical patient presented with fever, headaches and right-sided weakness. The CT scan displays the features of toxoplasma encephalitis multiple lesions which take up the contrast median. Depending on the plane of the CT section, ring-like uptake is evident. The lesions are surrounded by radiolucent edema. Case two, a 59-year-old man with a convulsion and left-sided weakness shows again the typical ring-like uptake of contrast medium and the perilesional edema. After four weeks of treatment with sulfadiazine and perimethamine, the lesion is no longer visible. 
Three months later, only a small calcification remains. This image illustrates the edema and mass effect of toxoplasmic abscesses. Note the target lesion in the left occipital lobe and the absence of the posterior parts of the fourth ventricles, which are obliterated by the swelling. Patient four was a man with fever, headache, and a right-sided pyramidal syndrome. The hypodense lesions in the right temporal and occipital lobes show no contrast enhancement immediately after injection, but typical ring enhanced lesions are obvious two hours later. Magnetic resonance imaging MRI. T1 images are similar to contrast enhanced CT images in that the lesion is often ring-like and lights up, whereas the surrounding edema is dark. In contrast, T2 images show edema and fluid accumulation in white. A comparison of the same lesion as seen in contrast enhanced CT and in the MRI T2 scan after gadolinium injection. The two images are similar to a positive and negative photograph. Successful treatment of cerebral toxoplasmosis. Between September 12, 2000 and November 29, Note the near disappearance of perilesional edema and the reappearance of the anterior horn of the fourth ventricle. Brain biopsy to establish the diagnosis of a toxoplasma abscess is not without risks, so that the therapeutic trial of sulfur drugs is often appropriate. To assess treatment response, 10 to 14 days should elapse. Here's a typical example with a decrease in the size of the lesion and of the surrounding edema slash mass effect after 10 days. Patient 8 presented with headaches and diplopia due to weakness of the right abducens muscle. After injection of contrast, a annular lesion in the mesencephalon appears. Left CT scan, center and right MRI. In this man with right homonymous hemianopsia, there is a corresponding occipital lesion. In addition, the CT scan reveals a second lesion in the frontal lobe. On day 22, after three weeks of treatment with high-dose sulfadiazine and perimethamine, the lesion was no longer apparent. However, 45 days later, after treatment interruption, there is a relapse, responding again to treatment. Toxoplasmosis can also present as acute diffuse encephalitis, as it did in this man with status epilepticus. The diagnosis was established by brain biopsy. When there is a solitary lesion, the diagnosis leans towards lymphoma. But no rule without exception. This patient was transferred from prison to a nearby psychiatric facility because he quote unquote acted strange. The T1 image re reveals a lesion in the frontal lobe or lobes which takes up the gadolinium stain. The T2 weighted MRI scans show the massive edema. The diagnosis of cerebral toxoplasmosis was established by biopsy. The patient made an uneventful recovery. 
Biopsy is the gold standard for diagnosing toxoplasmosis, but it is not without risks. Patient 12 had severe immune suppression and multiple CNS lesions with a differential of toxoplasmosis and lymphoma. Empiric treatment of toxoplasma encephalitis was complicated by a severe rash. A needle biopsy established the diagnosis of toxoplasmosis, but was complicated by bleeding. A coronal slice of the brain at autopsy showing multiple hemorrhagic lesions due to toxoplasmosis. A coronal section of brain with a hemorrhagic toxoplasma abscess. On the right, a typical toxoplasma tissue kist. Cysts of T gondii, large arrows, in a brain biopsy. Note also the inflammatory microglial response, small arrows. Toxoplasma abscess. On the right, a central area of devitalized tissue with the approximate margin of the abscess indicated by the red line. On the left, the area of active multiplication of toxoplasma in the abscess margin with toxoplasma tachyzoids. The differential diagnosis of toxoplasma brain abscess includes progressive multifocal mucoencephalopathy, brain lymphoma, metastases to the brain, and bacterial and mycobacterial brain abscesses. The patient presented with confusion, dementia, and weakness of the left arm. Note absence of contrast enhancement even after a double dose and delayed imaging. The lesion progressed despite antitoxoplasma treatment. The diagnosis of PML was established by brain biopsy and autopsy two months later. These images show the so-called typical features of AIDS-associated CNS lymphoma, a unique lesion with irregular uptake of gadolinium and with a mass effect best visible in the T2-weighted MRI. Other cases of lymphoma, however, show a ring-like enhancement indistinguishable from brain abscesses, such as those caused by toxoplasma. The next patient is a 45-year-old man presenting with seizures. He is an ex-IV drug user with 30 pack years of cigarette use. He's also HIV positive with 277 CD4 cells per microliter. Several lesions with ring-like enhancement were found by CT. The chest X-ray showed a mass in the left apex and bronchoscopy revealed undifferentiated carcinoma. Note that while the CT images could suggest toxoplasmosis, the CT4 count of 277 would be very high for this diagnosis. But the diagnosis is not always that straightforward. Patient 16 was similar to the previous one. He was 58 years old, also an ex-drug addict, HIE positive. He was admitted for confusion, fever, and weight loss. Now the CT scan of May 19, 2001 showed intracerebral polycyclic lesions with a differential diagnosis of toxoplasmosis, lymphoma, or abscess. The working diagnosis was cerebral toxoplasmosis and a therapeutic trial of sulfadiazine and pyrimethamine was started. However, there were big psychiatric problems with agitation and aggression of personnel and he was transferred to a psychiatric ward. 
but sent back rapidly to the general hospital because of cough and fever. These are two CT scans from May 19th and June 1st, 2001. Consider that in the interval, the patient was treated against presumptive toxoplasmosis. One can understand, therefore, that the radiology report from June 1st reads, compared to the preceding scan, the lesions previously seen have increased in size. The most likely diagnosis is lymphoma. However, the chest X-ray suggested yet another diagnosis. Pneumocystosis? Question mark. During attempted bronchoalveolar lavage, the pneumologist saw that the posterior and apical segments of the right superior lobe were obstructed. Cytology and biopsy showed an undifferentiated carcinoma, and no pneumocystis were seen. In retrospect, a pulmonary mass was visible in the admission radiograph of May 19, 2001. Bacteria and mycobacteria can also cause brain abscesses. Two examples. On the left, a brain abscess due to Streptococcus miliary in an HIV negative IV drug user with endocarditis and positive blood cultures. On the right, a brain abscess due to mycobacterium tuberculosis in an African HIV positive patient. The diagnosis was established by brain biopsy. The examples show that brain abscesses due to other microorganisms cannot be distinguished by CT or MRI scan from toxoplasma brain abscesses. Limits and uses of antibody tests for the diagnosis of toxoplasma encephalitis. Controls are patients with other AIDS-defining opportunistic infections. TE are patients with toxoplasma encephalitis. Each line represents one patient. The first serum was drawn at least three months before presentation, the second serum at the time of diagnosis, and the limit of detection is indicated by the dotted line. The left panel shows that approximately 30% of controls were seronegative for toxoplasmosis at presentation, whereas such seronegativity was rare in patients with toxoplasma encephalitis. Even the two patients without antibodies at the time of diagnosis were seropositive in a previous sample. In conclusion, the absence of antibodies is a strong argument against the diagnosis of toxoplasmosis, but the presence of antibodies does not establish the diagnosis. A Kaplan-Meier plot showing the time to interruption of treatment because of side effects. SU equals sulfonamides, CL equals clindamycin, PY equals pyrimethamine. Unfortunately, the most if effective drugs, it is high-dose sulfonamides, are also the least tolerated. Finally, a word about disseminated toxoplasmosis in AIDS. This is a rare disease, occurs only in patients with extreme immune suppression. It is a reactivation of a pre-existing toxoplasma infection. Lung involvement predominates with encephalitis, myocarditis, paniculitis, severe sepsis, acute respiratory distress and multi-organ failure. Historically, the mortality was more than 90%. There is nothing specific about the chest X-ray in cases of disseminated toxoplasmosis. Usually, the first suspicion is pneumocystis carinii pneumonia, and the diagnosis is established by bronchoalveolar lavage which shows the crescent-shaped tachycytes of toxoplasma 
in the bronchoalveolar fluid. One particularity of disseminated toxoplasmosis, the extremely elevated LDH levels. This graph shows a comparison of pneumocystis pneumonia, cerebral toxoplasmosis, and disseminated toxoplasmosis. The approximate upper limit of normal is indicated by the dashed line. The LDH levels in disseminated toxo are clearly different from the modest elevations seen in other AIDS-defining infections. This video is part of a series on opportunistic diseases in HIV-AIDS. I'd be grateful for any feedback that you might have. If you are interested, please subscribe.